power. We all want it, but as we know, too much power, especially in the wrong hands, can be dangerous, pushing those downstream to their limits. And not enough power can be extremely frustrating, feeling weak, anemic, and wanting more. So how do we find that perfect amount of power, the Goldilocks combination of amplifier and speaker? How do we get it just right? First, let's talk about your power ratings. You'll see an amp rated to put out a certain amount of power and speakers rated to handle a certain amount of power. You'll often see two power ratings, RMS and peak power. RMS will always be the smaller number of the two. RMS stands for root mean squared. Now this isn't science class, so we aren't going to do a deep dive into root mean squared. No, for our purposes, we can assume that an RMS power rating is an average. How much power can an amplifier put out on average over time? And likewise on a speaker, how much power can a speaker receive or handle on average over time? RMS is the most reliable power rating we have. So as long as the manufacturer gives us their product's RMS power rating, we will use it to match a speaker to an amp. Peak power is exactly what it sounds like. It's a rating of how much power an amp can put out for a brief musical spike, or peak. And it's the same for a speaker. A speaker that can handle 50 watts continuously over time might also be able to handle 100 watts for a brief moment. And you'll often see wildly large peak power ratings on speakers and amps, because bigger numbers are more appealing to many shoppers. But we will always come back to RMS as the most reliable way to make sure an amp and speaker combination is safe and ideal. Okay, let's talk speakers. A speaker's power rating is determined by the size and number of the drivers, and more specifically the size of the voice coil and magnet, or the motor structure of the speaker. This is where the magic happens in a speaker. It's where electrical input causes the speaker's motor to move in and out, which moves the speaker in and out, vibrating fast enough to make music. The amplifier's output determines how precisely the speaker moves and with how much intensity and accuracy. Too much power and you'll push the speaker past its limits. Do that enough times and the speaker will die a tragic death. On the flip side, if you send a speaker less power than it was designed to work with, it may not sound as good as you might want it to. When this happens, many people turn the volume up even more, making the problem worse. This can also damage the speaker because you are asking it to play loud and accurate, but not giving it the power to do so. This manifests as distortion, and distortion can also damage a speaker. The design of the speaker, the materials used for the woofer, the tweeter, and how they are all connected to each other determines how efficiently that speaker will convert its input power into sound. The more efficient the speaker, the less power it takes to make that speaker move accurately. This is measured in decibels, and we include this rating on each speaker we sell, along with the power rating. So, we need an amp with enough power to get the volume and clarity we desire from our music, but not so much that it pushes the speaker past its limits. To do this, we use the RMS power rating of the amp and the speaker. The amplifier's RMS output should not exceed the speaker's maximum RMS power rating. And the closer we can get to that speaker's max RMS rating, the louder and more accurate it will perform. And the happier we will be when we turn the volume knob up on our favorite song. There are speakers that demand higher performance amplifiers if you want to get the full performance of those speakers, which means it's time to talk about impedance, ohms, resistance. Your speaker is constantly resisting power from the amplifier. The power from the amp has to move through the voice coil, a long piece of copper wire. The length and thickness of that wire determine a speaker's resistance measured in ohms. All of the wire that connects the amp to the speaker and the crossover the signal has to travel through on its way to the voice coil all add resistance. The total amount of resistance is called impedance. Most home speakers provide an amplifier with 8 ohms of impedance. Most amplifiers are designed to push power into an 8 ohm load. This is why most speakers work with most home amps. It's pretty much a standard for impedance. But there are exceptions to this standard. You'll see speakers rated at 6 ohms or 4 ohms. That's less impedance, meaning it pushes back less on the amplifier, allowing the amp to put out more power. You'll also see some speakers rated at a nominal or averaged impedance, and some that list a minimum impedance because the impedance changes at different frequencies. Not all amps can handle lower impedance. 
If an amp that's only stable down to 8 ohms gets connected to a 4 ohm speaker, the amp will try to make more power than it's capable of and usually it will shut itself down or go into protection to keep from overheating and letting out the magic smoke. Once the magic smoke is out, you cannot put it back in. Building speakers with less than 8 ohms of impedance is one way speaker manufacturers communicate to you, to me, to all of us that you should buy a better amp to power them. But how do you find a better amp? Some home stereo amplifiers are rated down to 4 ohms, but they don't really put out more power when you hook them up to 4 ohm speakers. They just have circuitry inside that makes the amp not overheat. Other home amps, ones we call high performance, are designed to not only handle lower impedances, but to actually make more power when they are connected to lower impedance speakers. They are built to a higher standard with stronger components, better heat dissipation, a more robust internal power supply, bigger capacitors, etc., etc. So we've added this designation where it applies on home amplifiers. Heck, we even added a big special note when you are looking at a pair of four or six ohm speakers that says high performance amplifier recommended with the link to all the amps we've determined worthy of this designation. Impedance in car audio follows all of the same electrical rules of Ohm's law, but there are some differences to be aware of. Car speakers generally are 4 ohm, and a car amp is rated to drive 4 ohm speakers, so there's not really much here to think about. You will see some speakers with less than 4 ohms, 2 ohm and 3 ohm speakers are plentiful, and many factory speakers are less than 4 ohms. This can cause problems if you are just powering speakers with the radio in your dash, but most car amps can deal with that lower impedance just fine. As for car subwoofers, whew, this is where things can get tricky. Most subs are 2 ohms, and most sub amps are designed to power 2 ohm subs. That's the sweet spot of impedance for car subs. But this can get a lot more complicated with dual voice coil and other switchable impedance subs. We have a whole other video all about matching car subs and amplifiers for that. If you are still watching this video, you must care a lot about getting it right. Maybe you're in the market for new speakers or a new amp or both. I'd like to add one more factor that's really helpful here, price. Now I'm not saying you should always get the most expensive amp or speaker. What I am saying is that the price should make sense. For example, if you're buying a $400 pair of home speakers, you don't need a $4,000 amp to power them. And on the flip side, if you're buying a $4,000 pair of speakers, a $400 amp is probably not going to power them sufficiently. There's no formula for the price of the speakers compared to the price of an amp. It's just one more factor to consider when shopping for speakers and amps. The price of the speakers and the amp should not be out of whack with each other. Keep the prices um, in whack and you'll be fine. There's one more thing we need to explain here, and that's how power is rated. Not all amplifiers are rated the same way, so the max RMS power numbers we see can be as different as apples and oranges. But if you know what to look for, you can reliably use these numbers to compare amplifiers. To rate an amplifier accurately, the amp should be playing the full spectrum of frequencies that humans can hear. We call this 20 to 20K, or 20 hertz to 20,000 hertz. If an amp has to play all the possible frequencies it may need to reproduce, it's working as hard as it can, and the power rating will be more real world. Sometimes power is rated while just one frequency or a limited bandwidth of frequencies are played, which means the amp doesn't have to work as hard, so it can appear more powerful. Most manufacturers make it clear how they rate their power, and we always show you that information when it's available. As you shop for stuff on crutchfield.com, you'll see links to relevant articles and videos. Click on those for some deeper dives. Educate yourself and you'll shop smarter. Or just reach out to us and let one of our advisors do the heavy lifting for you. Thanks for watching.